Welcome to In Touch, your rugby lifestyle show where we talk about rugby with people who play rugby or those who just love it and are really busy doing some crazy other things. Today on the show, we have a guy who might as well have become a rugby player. In fact, rugby tried to recruit him and then boxing won. These days, he's got quite a few things going, of which the main is the fact that he's got a very big fight next weekend, but he's also got some super brew tips for us, which is always handy considering super brew is showing all of us flames. Uh, later in the show, we also hear from a very famous Springbok scrum off with an epic social media uh, following uh, all the way from England. Uh, we try to recreate what he does and uh, see if we can take some tips from him. And we uh, take a closer look at where Damien Willemse comes from and who his hero is. But first, uh, there's one thing that Kevin Lorena and Sonny Bill Williams have in common. Actually two, rugby and boxing. Bill, aka Rocky Williams, uh, just not taking himself all that seriously, which is always great to see. Welcome to In Touch, Kevin Larina. Thanks for having me on the show. I feel like that music should still be playing. <laughs> Stop the music. <laughs> Uh, it's great to have you on the show. When when I mentioned Sonny Bill's name earlier, you said, what a nice guy. You almost had a match. For sure. In 2012, when Sonny Bill, just before he fought Francois Boerta, yeah? and I was pushing for that fight because of his big name, and I had five fights in the professional boxing world, so it would have been an amazing fight, and, and that's really how we got to know each other and how our paths kind of crossed. Now, is setting up a match in boxing like Tinder? Do you swipe left? How does it work? Management, promotion, so my promoter Rodney Berman Golden Gloves could contact his manager and then offer the fight. But obviously you can't just fight anybody, but if it makes money, it makes sense. And are you a little disappointed that you haven't been able to go get into the ring with Sonny Bill Williams? Who would have known the outcome? He's a terrific athlete and that's what I admire most about him, besides the fact that he's a very nice guy. He's a terrific athlete and I think it would have made a good fight, but we're friends to the, today, so that's where we're at now. Now, he's not the only pro rugby player who's dabbled. Um, there's Sonny Bull and there's Quade Cooper. Yes. Um, you almost became a professional rugby player yourself. What is it with rugby and boxing? That's a good question. I think it, it could definitely be the contact side of it, the, the, the big knocks in that, and the competitive side of it, because rugby is a, a very much a team sport. Mm -hmm. Boxing is a very lonely individual sport, but at the end of the day, you still have your team behind you. I just think it's the competitive nature of both sports, like they make the beast collide. Mm. Uh, now, why is it that rugby lost out on your services? <laughs> you know what, I think it was, it was, it came down to decisions, you know, I was indecisive, I, I didn't really know what I wanted. You know, you know, I can say it honestly and openly, as an 18, 19 year old boy, you, what do you really want? Do you know what you want? I wanted boxing, I went for the boxing route. And then I was like, no, let's give, let's give rugby a go again. And then whilst I'm doing that, I'm like, I'll go back to boxing. But I'm not looking back, you know, obviously it would have been great to play at a high competitive level of rugby, but boxing's been very good to me and it's got me to where I am today. Now, for those who don't know, how close did you get to professional rugby? So I was in a 19 K Cup at the Lions so in the junior system, and then I left rugby completely. And then Sean Everett from the Sharks got in contact with me and he told me to come down on a trial there. And things just, just started rolling, you know. I went down the Vodacom Cup, I think I had two or three practices, and then they pulled me up, uh, John Plumley pulled me up to a super rugby practice. And then just how the ball got rolling. So, so in, in hindsight, a few, few of the players, Ryan Kinkowski, to this day says to me, I'm an idiot for leaving. You would have played, I said, would have, could have, didn't. So it is what it is, you know. Boxing's been good to me and it's got me to where I am today. I'm very grateful. Yeah, no, you, I mean, it's not like boxing has let you down no. or you let boxing down in any way. Have you managed to recruit some boxing fans out of, out of that rugby scene that you left? Most definitely. I think with any sport, you're going to have your fans and the people that 
maybe aren't such fans, but but that's all. It, that's what professional sports about. The people that support you, and, and not the, not to say the haters because they motivate you. So I think you, you do pull across the rugby fans to boxing and vice versa. Mm. I think sports in general, if you're a, if you can become a sporting icon and, do, and be successful, you know, and, and and rub shoulders with top individuals and top athletes, then all sports grow together. Mm. So um, you and Jesse are, are quite tight, Chomis, Jesse Creel. Yes. Um, what is it that you, you guys have in common besides the fact that you are incredibly hardworking athletes? Most definitely. You, you hit the nail on the head. <laughs> I'd say hardworking athletes. Maybe, not, maybe I'm not the most talented, but definitely hardworking. And there's a drive. You know, I know Jess from when you at Marisburg. I went to care. So, you know, we're playing the same, through the same system, mm -hmm. you know. And hard work. And, and I think the biggest thing is drive. You know, if I look at JC Dan as well, there's a drive behind them. You know, if you want to be successful, talent's one thing, and there's many people out there, there's numbers of talent. Mm. But I think you just got to have the X factor, but also the work ethic to take it to the next mm. level. Mm. Um, it's obviously a, an interesting move from a team sport like rugby into an individual sport, a bit like, you know, like go um, golf, boxing, tennis. Those are sports where you don't have the backing of, a, of teammates, you know, kind of carrying you when, when things are bad. Who do you rely on? You kind of, you know, you've got to rely on your team, your trainer, your, your teammates, your boxing teammates, your, your life at home, your family. The, the, the reality of it is, you know, with, with rugby, don't get me wrong, when, if, if you lose on the weekend, this is, this is the way I view it, if you lose on the weekend, you can come under scrutiny from the media. Maybe individual players get scrutinised, that's just the way media goes or all the, mm. the fans go. Mm. But next week they can have the best game and, and they're back on top again. Yeah. Which is the nice part, I think, of rugby, you know. Yeah. It's, it's a hard part when you're losing, but when you're winning, everyone loves a winner. Boxing, the same thing. But when you lose, that loss is on your record for eternity, and I think people mm. write you off in boxing. When you lose, they write you off to a point. You know, if you lose gracefully and you lose well, I don't think there's a way to lose well, but if you lose well, there's kind of hope. But, but yeah. kind of, that loss is still on your record, and it's very hard to come back from them. And I suffered a loss early on in my career, but it's got me to where I am today. So it's important sometimes to also just brush yourself off and get up. Get, off, get off the canvas, get up and keep moving forward. Now, um, Jesse isn't your only famous rugby friend. Uh, there, is a, there is another certain very famous rugby friend uh, who sent Kevin a message, kindly enough, all the way from the United Kingdom, former Springbok, Francho Eilfart. Kevin, my boy, um, yeah, where do I start? Um, yeah, we've... We've, uh, we've had a, quite a special journey together. We've been through some special times together. Um, yeah, I just wanted to say all the best in your up and coming fight. Um, yeah, I wish I was in person. Um, I can remember going to Azerbaijan with uh, Gav, your brother, and, um, and Gina, and, and, and yeah, witness you, you, <laughs> you make history and, you know, just the special feeling and um, the joy of seeing your friend, you know, succeed um, was really, really special. So, um, yeah, I'm sad that I can't be there for you. I, I really wish I was. I'm, I'm really, really proud of you as a person, as a father and as a friend. Um, you know, you've, you've come a long way um, as a professional boxer and uh, you're certainly a very special friend to me. Um, that's why I'm saying I wish I wish I was there to support you. And um, I, I know there's going to be a lot of um, special ones um, like Azerbaijan where I can be there and cheer you on and, and, and just show you how proud I am. But all the best, my boy. Um, I'm proud of you and I love you, my boy. How do you feel? Sure. Overwhelmed, eh? That's an amazing message. You know, me and Francois are tight and the fact that he's been in the UK, we haven't seen each other as much, but... He made the trip all the way over to Azerbaijan to watch me fight. I think he had like a short space of time off. Yeah, it's a good, it's a friend's all about, eh? Good guy. Very good guy. That made me smile. That made my day. <laughs> that made my day. <laughs> How did you meet? So Francois, um, I met him in Cape Town in 2011. I just turned professional and like kind of spoke about rugby, you know, and then the boxing. And then we kind of just set it off and we are friends ever since. You know, but I'd say like the last like four years we became very tight. You know, obviously when he went through his highs and lows in rugby, I was there with him and then he was there with me when I went through my highs and lows in boxing. 
And I think that's just, it's a friendship. We've got a, a friendship that not many people have. You know, we don't talk every single day, but when we do talk, it's like we haven't not spoken for a long time. Um, the one thing that you have in common with uh, Francois and many rugby players is the fact that you face serious injury every time you go into the ring. How do you deal with that? You know, I think the biggest thing is your recovery. As, and that's what I've learned as I've gone on in the sport is how you recover. The most important thing is recovery and to prevent those injuries. You, you are going to get injured. I mean, rugby players, it's, I don't think it's if it happens, it's when, it's when it happens. And with boxing, maybe the same shoulders, back, whatever it is. Um, but how you come back after that injury, being diligent in your rehab, you know, being patient. That's what my injury taught me was a high level lot of patience. I thought I'm going to be back in three months, 12 weeks, no, five, six months on the sideline. This makes you hungry, but it teaches you a whole lot of patience. You had a shoulder oper operation? Yeah, the, my rotator cuff repaired and my labrum. So, and that was after the Azerbaijan fight. That sounds like a rugby injury. <laughs> it probably was. Rotator cuff. Right, rotator cuff, probably from rugby and boxing just. Aggravated. Aggravated it because boxing is very shoulder based, all the impact on the shoulders. And I think that's the thing that attracts people to, to both rugby and boxing is that there is this high stakes, but also a bit of high glamour that goes with it. Mm. Um, all eyes on you. And, and Francho seems to be the kind of guy who really does well in the social media scene. Um, have you been taking some tips from him? I always take tips. You know, <laughs> before, before we became very good friends, you're somebody that I aspired to be like. I aspired to be like him. He, was, he came onto the scene, he was young, fiery on the wing, played scrum. He, was, he hit the rugby scene like a storm. Mm. And obviously when our friendship, when you, you become friends with someone, you know, you, you, you forget about that kind of stuff. But if you're looking at it on a social media point of view, terrific. The, the way he, he pushes his brand is phenomenal. And I can take a lot, I can take a lot from him and learn a lot from him. Mm. And that's what, I wouldn't say I've tried to do it, but uh, I'm Kevin Arena, you know, and he's Francois Hoha. But in my own right, I try to push my brand, and I think it's very important, especially in individual sports. How different is the front row you hang out with, with from the one we see on Instagram? I wouldn't say it's different. That's Hoki. Hoki's, you know, he's he's a he's an out there guy. He's got the best style. Like if you need style tips or what to get, phone Francois. He's gonna <laughs> help you, you know. But at the end of the day, I don't look at that kind of stuff. I look at him as a person, mm. humble. He's a good friend, somebody I could trust, somebody I could rely on, and that's how I see him. So behind all the social media, the glitz, the glamour, the FOSS cars, he steps out there on the Saturday, he runs onto that field and he has to perform. The same with boxing, but behind, behind all the glamour, when you step under those lights, you've got to perform, and that's the bottom line. And so that's why I respect him as a person as well. And do you also love cars as much? I'm not such a big car fan. Because <laughs> he's really into cars. Yeah, he is. <laughs> I mean, that is an extreme love for cars. That is. Look, maybe one day I'll get there, but for now, <laughs> we're looking at the, the finer things in life, maybe property and that kind of stuff. But, but um, cars are great. Everyone likes to drive a nice car. I don't think anybody can say, I don't want to drive a nice fast car. But he, he, he takes it to the next level, and that's what we love most about him. Yeah. Look at that. that. That's a social media post that creates hype. Yeah. And that's why he is where he is today on that platform, but you cannot, I always say to people, don't look, you look at that, but you cannot take away the fact that's a terrific athlete, mm. a great rugby player, mm. and that's how he's managed to, to like bind it all together. So I think if you can bring the two together, you can, you can work with something. So Lala Hirayama took the opportunity to go recreate, take a few tips, see if uh, normal people like us can live the Hoki lifestyle. Now, as I'm sure we all know, Francois Hochart is not just a great sports star, but also an incredible influencer. Listen, he knows exactly what it takes to make the perfect post. So, I'm up for the challenge. How hard can it be? We are out in Midran right now at Ultimate Heli, and this is attempt one of being Francois Hochart cool. Let's go. I think it might have been a little bit lower. There we go, there we go. It's all about the angles. It's all about the angles. Okay. All right, now I've got to turn on the Francois Hocott swag. They make this look so effortless, but being a superstar is hard. So we're 25 minutes in. We're trying to wrap this challenge in an hour. Look, it's not as easy as I thought it would be, but nonetheless, we're down the road. We're in Santon at Harley Davidson. We saw a really cool photo on Francois' feet of him on a bike. 
They're trying to recreate it. I'm not going down without a fight. Let the Instagramming continue. I don't have the smoldering thing. Like, I can't do the thing that he does that, like... So this is the photo we're trying to recreate. Probably not as good as it, but that's okay. Luckily, we're next door from Harley Davidson. The good guys at Land Rover have decided that they're gonna let us take one of these cars and, and use it for our picture. <sighs> Crossing fingers, this works. All right, producer, let's do this. Is he, he is smiling, isn't he? Man, guys, this is not <laughs> easy. <laughs> They need to be courses on how to do this right. We got it. Elma, I think I got it. I, I'd say that's a 10 out of 10 attempt there. 10 out of 10 from Lala. Well done, Lala Hirayama. Now, you, um, Kevin, are known for the boxing, but there's quite a lot that you're busy with outside of sport, which is interesting and inspiring at the same time. Sure. Why are you such a busy guy and how do you balance it? Sure, you know, I'd say balancing or juggling, one yeah. of the two. You know, obviously my main focus is boxing and my training and winning fights. But um, I've got a, a big passion for emergency medicine. One, uh, my two very good friends, three good friends are involved in it. Um, one's a CEO of Neke, the other one's a MD, Managing Director of Emerging Med and COO. So we all get along well and they got me, they pulled me into it. And, and it's something I'm passionate about, saving lives for me. You know, people go, but you're a professional boxer, you're a world champion. You know what? That's one part of me. Another part is saving lives and giving back. And, and also there's life after boxing. So there's a plan for me and there's life after boxing. And, and when I retire from boxing, I'm not just gonna sit back and do nothing. There's things I'm passionate about, like security and close protection. And, 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 and that's the route I wanna go in, combining the two. I think it's very important uh, for all athletes. Well, not all athletes, it's up to the individual. Some people go their own routes. I just think it's very important to, to, have, your, to have your focus on your sport, but also to, to have something to fall back on and to set your mind on the day you, lay, you hang up your gloves or hang up your boots or whatever it is. And of course, in your case, you're not only thinking about your future, you've got a family. You're a, like a Most true definitely. family man. You know, my kids mean the world to me and giving them an amazing life, you know, and Gina, the mother of my kids, it's, 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 it's very important for me that, that I know that one day as life goes on, I've given them every possible opportunity to live a good life. And, and I think that's my core objective on this, on this earth. And boxing is going to take me there. It's part of the journey, but it's not the end of the journey. And I think there's life after boxing, but the most important thing is whatever I do, mm. in the back of my mind is my kids and, and getting them through schooling and giving them the opportunity that they deserve. So I saw on your Instagram that, and you mentioned, mentioned close protection, that you mm. have a selfie with Ed Sheeran. Yes. I don't have tickets for that concert yet. Oh, <laughs> have you got them on WhatsApp? Are you guys talking? And he doesn't have WhatsApp. What? He converse over email. He doesn't have, I shouldn't be saying this. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't have a cell phone. He doesn't have a cell phone. He's got like a tablet, like that. Everything's emails. Okay. But yeah, he's coming here on the 20th and we're doing his security. So they've assigned me as his close protection officer. And it's all about just networking, you know, he's, he's head security that side messaged me yesterday and said, hey bud, how can we watch your fight here in the UK? Oh, that's you know so I mean? cool. So it's just about linking and, and yeah, he's Ed Sheeran, he's a superstar. But like I said, and I, to, I told a lot of my friends, you'll never meet a more humble guy. Really? Doesn't like the limelight, just wants to get on stage and perform. What he wakes up in that morning, the yeah. clothes he puts on is the clothes he performs in. Really? That's him. Just gets on stage and does music. And that's what I, I was very humbled when I saw that because having the opportunity to look after him was amazing. It's an amazing opportunity that I got. But seeing the person he is, like, opened me up and I'm very happy because I looked after him for Global Citizen. Yeah. And now he's got his tour here of South Africa and we're going to look after him again. And he's going to watch you on the 16th? Hopefully he's going to. Well, more than likely because he's a big boxing fan. So Kevin, he's his security. Mm -hmm. also, his name's also, also Kevin. Kevin. <laughs> so his head bodyguard uh, asked me, well, how can we watch your fight this out? So I presume they're both going to watch. Oh. And there's no time lapse, so. That's rad. Oh, yeah. Is that your most famous fan? I wouldn't say he's a fan. Maybe he's, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you can most, claim him. We'll, we'll I'm going to claim, claim him. He's him. my most famous You've fan. got him on email. I mean, what more? <laughs> he's my most famous fan. <laughs>
That is impressive. I don't know how many rugby players can say that they have Ed Sheeran in their corner. And he makes good music. And he makes excellent music. Before, before the, before the, the Global Citizen, you know, I knew one or two of his songs. But yeah. then when I eventually, like I said, let me get this guy's album because yeah. I must listen to his music. Mm. And he makes good music. And, and then when I watched him live at the rehearsals, so he was with Beyonce and they were doing these rehearsals. Oh. I was like. No way! I was literally like, and I watched him make a song with, so Jay Z and Beyonce were here as well. They literally made a song in 30 minutes. No. And I was like, these people are geniuses. People see the glamour and yeah. the Queen Bee or whatever it is, but they're talented. They they composers. They musically they talented people, and and I, and I got to see that. So that was really cool. Wow, that Beyond is all the fame and hype. There's talent, and that's what matters got a, most. Got a pretty exciting life. I'm enjoying it, I'm not going to... That's pretty cool. <laughs> um, so we have been catching up with some other heroes, not, not necessarily musical heroes or boxing heroes, but rugby heroes and their heroes. Um, so we've sent our cameras down to the Western Cape, to Somerset West, where Damien Willemse is from, to catch up with his childhood hero, his coach, who coached him in primary school at Somerset West Methodist. You can watch the full story on Friday afternoon on Super Sports Social Platforms. Yo, I'm very humbled. I can almost uh, uh, see the tear here. But to be honest, I'm very honored to have so much respect from such a great player. There are many players that I've coached. And um, to be called a hero by Damien Willems to me is just awesome. Beautiful story there, uh, the pride of Somerset West. So make sure you keep an eye out for, uh, for that story on Damien Willemse and the guy who was his hero. Now, speaking of uh, heroes, the superheroes are in action this weekend. The Bulls are playing the Sharks, and this is such a tough one for me to call. It's Black Panther and Captain America in action at Loftus Fersfeld. Um, you were at the Sharks Academy, but you Chumis with Jesse Creel. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't this incredibly hard to call? It's a tough one. And, I, and as a young kid, I was a fan of the Sharks. But these, tough, these local games are like the hardest games to call. But I'm going to stick my neck out. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go the Bulls by 10. Captain America by 10. By 10. Captain America by 10. So make a note for your Super Brew. And then the other one that I'm also battling with, Lions, Jaguares. Now, the Lions clubbed the Jaguares in Argentina first round of the competition. Yep. Uh, but since the Jaguares beat the Bulls and the Blues, this weekend? It's a tough one. The Aguirre is a dirty side, but we stick our neck out. We've got to go local. I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> we got to go. Hey, listen, my, my father's Argentinian. Oh, really? So yeah, maybe that's the fighting side. <laughs> but I'm going to stick my neck out. I'm going to go for the Lions. Lions by? It's going to be close. Close. Five, ten. Let's go five. Five. Lions by five. Okay, Joe Big Boy through and through. Um, so, so some local Super Brew predictions from you. And then uh, you, the small matter of your fight coming up. Um, tell me about this and how important it is. Obviously, it's my first fight since my shoulder operation. So when I step through those ropes next week, Saturday, it would have been eight months since my last fight. And I'm defending my world title, which I won in 2017. So this will be my fourth defense against Arthur Mann from Germany. Mm -hmm. He's an undefeated fighter. But I know I've got business to take care of and we've got bigger things on the horizon, but I'm not overlooking him. He's a tough competitor. It's going to be a hard fight and I just look forward to it. I mean, this is what I enjoy, stepping, mm. into, the, stepping into the ring and putting on a good show for the fans, for the rugby fans now, <laughs> for the boxing fans too. Yeah, so this weekend you're watching rugby, next weekend you're going to recruit some of those bulls and sharks. Watching shots, rugby guys. in my change room. Are you? Yeah, so the, they, we have these TVs in the, like the change room. Yeah. The hotel, it's almost like a hotel room yeah. where, we check, where the, 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 the boxing is. And I always put on like the rugby because when I fight in March, April, it's like super rugby season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll be watching the rugby while the other fights are on. Just watching some rugby, watching the other fights, <laughs> and then when it's time to warm up, then it's gloves on, switch on. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming in. Thanks, It was lovely me. to meet you. And um, one last quick question. You are a very kind of quiet, dignified boxer in the boxing realm. Uh, what is your position? Why is that? Tell me about it. I think, I'll I just say I'm me. I've always said to myself, you know, I, I never want to be somebody who's feared. Mm -hmm. I always want to be respected. So if somebody says, I know Kevin Arena, oh, I feel that guy. No, I don't want that. I want to be respected. But I'm also not somebody who talks smack. You know, a lot of people say to me, you should talk, you should hop your fight, you should talk smack. That's not me. I'm there. When I step into the ring, I'm going to fight. And that's where I'm going to do my talking. And, and that's just my persona. 
Just keeping it calm, keeping it real all the time. Let the gloves do the talk. 100%. Awesome. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you for joining us on In Touch. Same time, same place again next week. Use the hashtag SS Rugby. Chat to us when you're watching that rugby live on the weekend. Of course, all of Super Rugby Live and exclusive on Super Sport 1. Cheers. And on that note, thanks so much for watching. And if you'd like to see some of our older episodes, click up here to subscribe to Supersport's YouTube channel over there.